Hi everybody, my name is Leslie Watson and I'm another of your friendly consultants from the CDS Consulting Co-op. And I'm here today to spend just a couple minutes talking with you about one of the four dimensions of the participation framework, my personal favorite, and that is the concept of service. So I really um, love the fact that serve is part of the framework because I think that it offers a really great opportunity to bring a sharp focus on the ways in which co-ops are different from both regular business enterprises and from social ventures. I think serve kind of sits right at that juncture and so it's a great place for us to kind of explore the difference, um, figure out what it means, and then figure out how we can harness it for the, to the benefit of our co-ops. That having been said, I also recognize that serve, uh, unlike own or use or belong, I think it's a little bit opaque, or maybe it feels like something that actually isn't relevant to a large segment of the co-op stakeholders. So most people, when asked, could probably tell you, you know, that they, sure, they own their co-op and yeah, they use their co-op and, and to varying degrees have some sense of belonging and they would understand that, you know, um, pretty readily. But if you ask them if they serve their co-op, I think you know about 99% of them might actually say no. Because I think that when we talk about serving the co-op, the tendency is to think of people who serve as an elected member of the board of directors, maybe in a key volunteer role, you know, especially with a startup, or uh, you know, maybe some of our really sort of lead uh, management folks who, who, who really embrace the co-op mission and manifest it to the community. And so those people you know, may be identified as, as um, kind of serving in a way that almost everybody else doesn't and doesn't want to, frankly. <laughs> if you said to people, would you like to serve your co-op? They'd say, well, you know, thanks a lot. Happy to own and use. Love the feeling of belong but I'm a little too busy to serve. So our job here today in this room full of people who in fact do serve in that commonly understood way because you're here spending your Saturday talking about, serve, about participation in co-ops, your job and our job together is to kind of crack open that serve nut a little bit and see if we can um, kind of translate it, open it up and think of other ways that people do serve, can serve, serve all the time, and help them then kind of connect their own behaviors to that concept of service so that they can understand that there's lots and lots of ways to participate in that way that don't in at all involve, you know, putting your name on a ballot. So for me, when I'm trying to figure out what a word means, my default is always to open up the dictionary. So I did that for serve. You can do it yourself on your smartphone right now. And you will find lots and lots of definitions for that word that are really great starting points for this conversation. Of course, some of them have nothing at all to do with what we care about. Um, they, you know, mention tennis balls and prison sentences. And that fortunately is not part of the participation framework. But the ones that do make a lot of sense are the ones like um, the definition of serve that says it means to work for. Or to provide goods and services to, or to help meet needs and requirements. All three of those actually offer a really good um, place to start thinking about how to broaden our conception of service. So to work for, um, you know, immediately makes us see that, that employees in the cooperative serve all the time by contributing their labor to the business to help make it run, to help make it exist. And so, you know, um, I think, uh, different workplaces have different uh, degrees of success of connecting the notion of work to a sense of service. Um, they have to inspire employees to make them feel like their work is in fact a form of service. But I think there's a lot of power in that, um, both for the benefit of the co-op, but also for the benefit of the people working there um, to really connect their work to mission. So that is definitely one way that we serve our co-ops to provide goods and services for. So that's an interesting one. We have to cast our conception of co-op stakeholders a little more broadly to think of that as serving the co-op. But what if we did, what if we 
did uh, construct our relationships or develop our relationships with our vendors and our growers and our farmers to include in it a sense of service, a sense of connection to the co-op and a sense that the food that they produce is um, a way of serving the entire enterprise. Wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't that be a rich and rewarding relationship on both sides? So um, I encourage you to think about whether that exists in your own co-op or how you can make it happen if it did. And then the final one, to help meet the needs and requirements. So co-op have, co-ops have lots of needs and requirements. One of them, of course, is that they need people to use the co-op. So, you know, clearly there is not, there's a lot of overlap. The threads of own and use and serve kind of all weave together into the fabric of our participation and there is um, similarity between them. But using the cooperative is a really key way in which we serve it. Needs us to do that. Absolutely needs us to do that. So the next time that you're in there, your store, and you buy some ice cream, right? You can say, you know what? I got to do this because I got to serve my cooperative, right? So there you go. Just take that's my little gift to you today. Um, another way that people can serve their co-ops is to tell the co-op story. And... Certainly for any business, having a satisfied customer going out in the marketplace and, and doing word of mouth marketing is highly, highly valuable. And that's true for co-ops too. But um, I think that, you know, um, telling the story in a way that constitutes serving uh, maybe involves a little bit more than putting stars on Yelp.com, um, although that's great. Uh, I think that when people talk about owning and using a co-op with their in their networks and with their neighbors and their friends and connect it back with their own choices about the kind of world that they want to be in or just the kind of enterprise they want to be associated with or the kind of values that they have that becomes a really really um, powerful way to elevate the co-op to bring new people in and also to make people feel really connected and to cultivate that sense of belonging so telling the story is in fact a form of service uh, I think another way we serve our co-op as users is when we tell the co-op when stuff doesn't really satisfy us right so um, you, you you know any any again any business wants customers to speak up when they're not happy. And so approaching that as a way of um, helping to meet the co-op's need, to meet my need, right? <laughs> um, to offer that feedback and those suggestions is um, actually a form of service. Who knew? Um, and here we just thought it was complaining. Uh, and then the final way that I'll just mention, and there are many others, but the one final way that I'll mention is that I think that when a co-op identifies a, a kind of a broader value or reason for its existence or a component of its ends policy um, and tells that out to its owners and its stakeholders in a way that they actually uh, internalize and absorb and take for their own and then uh, um, um, adopt it and share it in, uh, again in the broader world, that is actually a way of serving the co-op. So for instance, a co-op that says, you know, we are going to be part of building a broader co-op economy and it tells that message well, so that owners say, you know what, I'm going to be part of a broader co-op economy and I'm going to go out and I'm going to choose co-ops and I'm going to, you know, um, support collective forms of enterprise and that's how I'm going to spend my money and um, all of those things that kind of feed back into the co-op's desire to, to see that change change in the world, um, that I think can be conceived as also a way of service. So advocacy uh, for the things that the co-op itself has identified as priorities, um, which of course it does in consultation with its owners. So it's all very circular. So with these few quick examples, I hope that it can give you some fodder for conversations to start thinking about all the different kinds of things that we do that help meet the needs of the co-op and to, um, even as we're meeting our own needs, right? Even as we're meeting all kinds of other needs, it, that, that form of participating it comes back in, that, that kind of participation comes back in and really helps to strengthen the co-op, right? And um, harness that power of participation in ways that everybody can be involved in. Thanks a lot.